Welcome back to Midpoint. I'm John Bachman sitting in for Ed Berliner today. And we're also going to welcome in Middle East analyst, former prisoner of war and a freedom fighter and award-winning documentary filmmaker. He's also the founder of Sons of Liberty International, Matthew Van Dyke. Matthew, thanks for being with us. Matthew, are you with us? Yes, I'm here. Okay, thank you very much, and I'm glad you could be with us. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the situation. We've uh, been reporting uh, in Newsmax now throughout the week about this fight for Tikrit, uh, the Iraqi military, uh, working with the Iranian military. Tell us what you know about uh, what's taking place on the ground in Iraq right now. Well, the Iraqi government has decided to attack the stronghold of Tikrit, a largely Sunni area, with the help of Iran and Shiite militias. Uh, this is likely going to actually lead to a lot of sectarian violence and could inflame the situation uh, just as much as it helps, actually. So why is this being done, and why is the U.S. government allowing this to take place? Well, the U.S. government doesn't have much leverage or control over the Iraqi government ever since we, we pulled troops out. Uh, the Iraqi government's been close to Iran since the fall of Saddam and the election of, of Shiite leadership. So really, this is the Iraqi government asking Iran to help instead of the United States. Uh, refusing to allow U.S. air power to help and really increasing the relationship and their already close relationship between the Iraqi government and the Iranian government. And that is, of course, very concerning for a lot of folks. And how much does this have to do with the current ongoing negotiations involving the United States and Iran over nuclear weapons? Well, it's certainly to the advantage of the Iranians. Uh, it increases their position as a major player in the region. And it is quite embarrassment, actually, for the United States to have the Iranians being preferred over the Americans by the Iraqi government when it comes to cleaning up the mess of ISIS in Iraq. Oh, certainly, of course, after all the blood and treasure that was spent in Iraq. Um, I also want to ask you uh, about the, this current or the new an announcement from Boko Haram about uh, its alliance with ISIS. What do you make about this announcement? It's largely an effort by Boko Haram to bolster its position and perhaps increase recruitment ahead of a planned offensive against them. Uh, it's not really clear if ISIS leadership really accepts Boko Haram. It's not likely they'll refuse having an affiliate uh, in Nigeria. But as far as actual coordination between the two groups, it's, it's fairly unlikely. Uh, the version of Islam that Boko Haram practices is, is a bit different than what hardcore fundamentalist ISIS members practice. So uh, the level of cooperation will be more uh, out of, uh, one would say, um, mutual, mutual direction rather than actual real strategic leadership. Well, you might be able to say uh, convenience for Boko Haram. Of course, it's pretty easy to put out uh, internet video and claim this is happening, but is it a, perhaps, uh, you may have alluded to this a little bit, a move of desperation considering there is a new uh, initiative uh, from African troops to try and defeat Boko Haram. Right. Finally, African nations have gotten their act together and are really going to make a move against Boko Haram in the coming months. Uh, and this is really a last-ditch effort to really bolster their recruitment. They already have several thousand fighters, but they really want to increase their position, um, try to attract some funding, try to attract some more recruits ahead of this offensive, and put themselves on the map as something that, that jihadists should back. But you know, really, the African jihadist movements have never had as much traction as they've had in the Middle East. And with a lot of foreign fighters already going to Syria and Iraq, it's not clear that, that this attempt by Boko Haram will actually do much for them. And something else that we're hearing about in the region, too, are uh, essentially foreign fighters flocking to this region uh, to fight against ISIS. Christian mercenaries, if you will, who, who are going to this region. Tell us, Matt, what, what do you know about that current situation right now? Well, there's groups in Syria and Iraq that are accepting foreign fighters. There's a Dwek Nosha in Iraq, which is a Christian group, and there's the YPG in Syria, which is a Kurdish Muslim group. Um, both of them are accepting foreign fighters. There have been some influx of foreign fighters. In Dwek Nosha, they have less than a dozen out of, out of a force of 200. So it's a phenomenon that's, that's relatively small. Um, my company, Sons of Liberty International, is recruiting foreigners, but not to fight, but to actually train Christians in Iraq who are fighting ISIS. All right, well, we want to talk about that in a little bit more detail coming up, but I also want to talk uh, about the, the rift that we've heard about within ISIS itself. Is there any reality to this? Is, is there real division within ISIS now? Uh, you know, there is some division. All these movements have divisions within them. Uh, the split between Jabhat al-Nusra and ISIS was one such larger division. As time goes on and rivalries over territory and the spoils of war happen, uh, rivalries will increase. Um, 
one thing is that if, if al-Baghdadi is killed, you might see a splintering of the organization as successors vie for power. Uh, there was also recently an incident near Aleppo where some European ISIS members tried to leave and return to Europe and they were imprisoned by ISIS. So, you know, there, there are internal divisions developing, and hopefully they'll continue to develop until it fractures the whole system. I know you have a lot of knowledge about the situation. Real quickly, before we take a quick break for the commercial, do you think uh, that these divisions are real and that they will get worse over time, or is this, you know, par for the course with an organization like ISIS? Uh, it's par for the course, and the fractures will continue to happen. You're talking about an Islamic state that stretches across two countries, that has divisions already between the membership. You have All a lot right, of Matthew, fighters, I'm, a lot of competing interests. We got about five seconds. We got to go to commercial. We'll be back, though. We're going to talk about your organization right after this. And we welcome back to Midpoint, founder of Sons of Liberty International, Matthew Van Dyke. And Matthew, I can see you now. It's great to talk to you. Uh, talk to me a little bit more about your organization. You said you were recruiting guys to come in and train uh, these Kurdish and Christian fighters in Iraq. Tell me why that is so crucial right now. Well, starting in December, we went over and I took U.S. military veterans with me and we trained a battalion of Christian fighters uh, to fight ISIS and defend their lands. Uh, they were the Nineveh Plain Protection Units. Uh, and this battalion will, will soon be deploying in defense of northern Iraq. Uh, the organization is set up as a company, but it operates on nonprofit principles as a revenue neutral entity. So we rely entirely on public support. Uh, and if anybody wants to support it, it's Sons of Liberty International dot com. Uh, and you can you can show your support right through the site. And who are some of your main supporters right now? Uh, the public. We've opened it up to anybody around the world who who hates ISIS and wants to help Christianity in Iraq. Uh, we've had a good response so far, but a lot more is needed for us to continue operations and expand operations in Iraq. And what is the, is the most crucial need at this point? We've heard about the Assyrians in, uh, you know, being persecuted and killed and other Christian enclaves in the Middle East are in real jeopardy right now. What is the most urgent area of need for your organization as well as Christians in the region? Uh, well, the most urgent area of need is security. Uh, they have not had a force to defend themselves. The Peshmerga have not defended them in Iraq or, in, uh, or the Kurdish fighters in Syria have not been able to defend them. So they're vulnerable to ISIS raids, to, as we see all, saw in Syria, ISIS coming in and kidnapping people. Uh, it's a very dire situation, and they have to act very quickly. We trained up uh, a battalion for a very, very cost-effective. Cost the private sector here is doing it a lot more efficiently than the government could. Well, that's, very that's an interesting to point. Themselves and, Let's talk about yes. that, about the will. I mean, you mentioned that the private sector can do this uh, more economically, but talk also about the will of the uh, fighters there in Iraq. Well, they've suffered greatly. Uh, they've wanted their own defense force for a long time. You've seen their, their entire history is being wiped out as ISIS attacks historical sites that are Assyrian Iraqi historical sites. Um, they've had women kidnapped and sold as jihadi brides or sex slaves. They've had their homes destroyed. This is a very motivated, willing population that's ready to stand up and defend themselves. They're very capable. We've worked with them since December. Uh, and they're a very U.S. friendly force. Uh, and they should be supported. And we're doing our best to support them. And we have heard also about the use of Sunni militias and Shia militias. How do these fighters work or integrate with those different sects? Well, everybody will have to cooperate together to take on ISIS. But the, the Christian militia is looking to coordinate mostly with the Peshmerga and some with the Iraqi army. Uh, mostly they'll be deployed around Karakosh and Mosul in the north. And, you know, it, it, it'll take them working alongside Sunni and Shia militias, perhaps. But really, they're trying to work closely with the Peshmerga, most of all. And I guess, Matt, what I'm trying to get at here is, you know, the, the sectarian and tribal nature uh, of this region uh, is part of the problem here. But is there, is what ISIS is doing, is ISIS at a point now where there's enough will from these different groups to, to really work together for real change? I believe all the groups will cooperate until ISIS is gone, and then we'll see what happens. Uh, unfortunately, history suggests that groups will be fighting each other afterwards, which is why it's especially important now for Christians to organize, uh, for us to train them, and for them to be capable for their own defense, not only during the fight with ISIS, but afterwards. And that's what Sons of Liberty International is trying to do. It's a long-term project to help the Christians of Iraq and help preserve Christianity in Iraq. Now, I want to ask you, too, about a recent article that was published in Vox, and I have a, a copy of it right here, and, and the title is, ISIS is losing. Do you believe that is the case? 
No, unfortunately, that's not the case. ISIS recruitment is still strong. They still control a lot of territory. They control a lot of cities, which are very hard to dislodge them from. This is a fight that will take years to resolve. And what this article says specifically is it may seem hard to believe in Iraq and Syria the group still holds a stretch of territory larger than the United Kingdom. Manned by a steady stream of foreign fighters, fighters pledging themselves to ISIS recently executed 21 Christians in Libya. We talked about that. Total destruction uh, of these uh, Assyrian villages in Iraq. Um, but they talk about these cracks, which we mentioned in the previous break, and those cracks are very real. Where do, where do they get off saying that ISIS is losing? It's obviously, you don't, don't agree. Well, there's certainly evidence of cracks and fissures and problems within ISIS, but there's problems within every organization. The problems within ISIS are really nothing compared to the problems within, for example, the Iraqi army. Um, so, you know, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't declare ISIS dead really anytime soon. It's very premature to say that ISIS is being defeated, uh, actually, for the amount of munitions dropped on them uh, by the United States and the amount that they're being assaulted by enemies throughout the region, in Syria and Iraq. They're holding up quite well, and their recruitment is not diminished. So this is a fight that has to be taken seriously and should not be declared a victory prematurely. Now, we're looking forward to this uh, battle uh, campaign for, to crit. Uh, and what from that to you will indicate which direction uh, this battle to degrade and destroy ISIS, is, is, which direction it's really moving in? Well, there's no doubt that ISIS will be defeated into crit. It's a matter of how long it'll take, and more importantly, how much damage will be done to the city and to the Sunni population in the city. Uh, you know, this could be a turning point in the conflict if the Sunni population is treated well and, and feels like they weren't persecuted by either the Iraqi government or the Shia militias. More likely, though, it is going to spark further sectarianism and possibly an alignment between some of the Sunni population and ISIS, perhaps even stronger than it's been so far. Really, stronger than it's been so far? Yes, if Sunnis feel persecuted by, by Shia militias or by the Iraqi central government, they more and more will align themselves with ISIS in opposition to those Shia militias. We're talking about militia and militia violence. We're talking about Iranian influence. Um, a lot of Sunnis will be standing next to ISIS fighters in Tikrit defending their city against what they perceive as an Iranian attack or Shia militia attack or Shia Iraqi central government attack. Is there any evidence, you know, we're talking about a lot of the same elements here uh, in the Sunni triangle, which were so difficult to defeat during the campaign in Iraq the first time around. Uh, do you see anything to indicate that there might be another quote-unquote Sunni awakening at some point here if ISIS really continues this line? Well, there have been some Sunni tribes that, that have taken part in operations against ISIS. There are some involved in the battle for Tikrit, and that's, a, that's an encouraging sign. The problem is that because of the heavy Iranian influence in the fight for Tikrit, there is a very likely possibility that Shiite militias might go out of control once they get inside the city, persecute the Sunni population, and this could actually lead to the opposite of an awakening, or an awakening on the side of ISIS in many areas. All right, well, it's interesting. I'm just reading a report here, a report here uh, from CBS News that has just come down. We talked about some of the issues within ISIS. There are activists reporting that more than 70 prisoners that took advantage of the infighting between these rival rebel groups and have escaped from Islamic State prison in Syria and Iraq. So we'll keep our eyes on what happens there. Thank you very much for being with us. Matthew Van Dyke He's the founder of Sons of Liberty International. We wish you b the best in all your endeavors over there. Stay safe, Matthew. Thank you very much. Our pleasure. Much more to come here on Midpoint. We're going to talk about Bill Cosby in his pajamas on video, saying he is far from finished. Innocent joke or insult to his accusers? Attorney Gloria Allred is here to discuss that. That's coming up right after this Newsmax Now update.